Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Ranked and Yu-Gi-Oh's Legacy of the Worthless. If you aren't familiar yet, in this series we're looking at the most infuriatingly unplayable archetypes ever shot out by Konami's executive asshole, what exactly makes those archetypes so horrible, and what needs to be improved in order for them to be less awful. The grading scale we use involves consistency, power, comeback ability, protection and versatility, and an archetype is considered terrible if it doesn't particularly excel in any of these categories. With that said, let's begin this episode's topic. Before we start, I would like to mention that the lovely background music for this video is a sample from Cloud of Judgment's Fluctuations of Nova album, which I recommend you check out in the description. Space. Superheroes. Cute animals. A combination of the aforementioned three sounds like nothing less than a stellar success no matter which media it would possibly be applied to. Unless, of course, we're talking about the world's most tentative card game when it comes to archetype design, in which case we get Neo Spatians, an adaptation of Judai's, or if you're a filthy dub watcher, Jaden's Season 2 and onward deck from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. In the anime, they were essentially the same thing as standard D heroes, but with a more narrow set of monsters and a primary focus on contact fusion, which is weird because polymerization was kinda the main thing about GX up until that point, but whatever. Protagonist archetypes never really tend to produce many long-lasting results, but while you can still make Synchrons, Gaga Ga and pure performer pals decently fun and competitive for your average locals, Neos patients are the kind of thing you have to carefully dissect from the anus up in order to find any traces of whatever's left to make a functioning deck out of. So you know what? Let's just do that. First of all, for a little bit of deja vu, considering the last archetype we talked about was Genex, this one also focuses on a normal monster. So what's the problem here? It's Elemental Hero Neos, a 2500 attack vanilla, that's level 7. Now, I realize Neos was kinda brought out from nowhere so that the protagonist could have his equivalent of Yugi's Dark Magician in terms of stat line, but I sincerely don't see the point in making him a normal monster. Most of the time, since the archetype is based on contact fusion, you'll be begging for this guy to hit the field one way or the other, but always ending up in miserable tears of pain because you can never manage to get out two goddamn tributes out on the field efficiently, and the support cards for bringing him out more often clog up your hand rather than helping out with the summon. He desperately needed some kind of inherent special summoning condition, but they blew it. Basically, this is why you run Prisma. The next card the archetype is focused around is Neo Space. I know it's a bit weird to be analyzing a field spell this early on in the video, but a lot of monsters are connected to it one way or the other, so we should probably get it out of the way. So, Neo Space is a field spell with the following effect. Elemental Hero Neos and all fusion monsters which use Elemental Hero Neos gain 500 attack. Also, those monsters do not have to activate their effects during the end phase that shuffle them into the extra deck. If you're unfamiliar with Neos by now, this last part might seem pretty absurd, and it is, but you ain't seen nothing yet. As a card by itself, the 500 boost basically just turns most of your fusions into 3k beaters, which is decent, I guess, but the defining characteristic of Neo Space is that unlike some other field spells that give their archetype a decent kickstart, this one makes its own archetype not completely dead on arrival. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get to the fusions. Alright, so who are these Neo Spatians? Well, there are six of them, so I might as well do them one at a time. First of all, Neo Spatian Aqua Dolphin. A level 3 with 600 attack and this effect. Once per turn, you can discard one card, look at your opponent's hand and choose one monster card in it. If you control a monster with attack greater than or equal to the attack of the chosen card, destroy the chosen card and inflict 500 damage to the opponent. Otherwise, you take 500 damage. Man, we've come a long way since Delinquent Duo and Confiscation. This might just be the most specific discard effect in history, and obviously it's not very good either. The cost is pretty heavy for this archetype, and the fact that you have to be controlling a relatively high attack monster in order to do anything relevant with this is another blow to any potential usefulness this card might have had. It's really not very good, but the fusion is kinda sorta decent. Here we have Elemental Hero Aqua Neos. Level 7, 2500 attack, which is standard for Neos fusions and the following effect. Must first be special summoned by shuffling Elemental Hero Neos and Neospatian Aqua Dolphin you control into the deck without polymerization. Once per turn, you can discard one card to destroy one random card in the opponent's hand. During the end phase, shuffle this card into the extra deck. So, when I said it's kinda sorta decent, what I meant was the effect is a decent upgrade over Aqua Dolphin. What I wasn't referring to are the following crimes committed by the Neos fusions upon their archetype. First, a contact fusion that shuffles its materials into the deck and cannot retrieve them unlike a certain other better archetype, and second, it takes its sweet time to go back home during the end phase and visit grandma or something. 
These are the two elements shared by almost every Neos fusion and I can tell you for a fact this doesn't exactly tickle my fancy. I have no idea why they decided to give them this kind of asinine limitation and the worst part is that I could actually somewhat tolerate this if upon returning to the Exer deck they resummoned Neos from the main deck so that you could at least continue your plays, but no! Back to zero for you and probably your life points next turn. So right now it would make sense for me to continue talking about the other Neos patients, however at one point Konami decided that they weren't gimmicky enough for an anime protagonist deck so out of nowhere comes the deranged pinhead brother of mask change, Nex. Lots and lots of Nex. Again, we're forced to talk about spells early on in the video because there are some monsters based around them. So here's Nex, a normal spell card with the following effect. Send one face-up Neospatian monster you control to the graveyard, special summon one level 4 monster with the same name from the extra deck. Hmm, a monster in the extra sharing a name with the main deck monster? Why, what degeneracy is this? Well, here's your answer. Neospatian Marine Dolphin is a level 4 fusion with 900 attack and its name is also treated as Neospatian Aqua Dolphin. Also, you can only special summon it with Nex. The actual effect? Literally the exact same thing as Aqua Dolphin. Discard a card, look at hand, select a monster, destroy it if you control a stronger monster, but without the 500 self burn if you don't. Well, to be perfectly fair, it is a straight upgrade, isn't it? But jokes aside, this is the kind of shit that gets printed because it appeared in one episode of the anime and the kids eat it up. But wait, the ride doesn't even stop here! If you're batshit insane enough, you can contact Fuse Marine Dolphin and Neos to get Elemental Hero Marine Neos, also known as one of the only Neos fusions that could even remotely be considered good. As stated, you summon it by shuffling Neos and Marine Dolphin into the deck and once per turn you can destroy a random card in the opponent's hand for no cost. The important thing to note is, it doesn't go back to the extra deck during the end phase. Something that would have been perfectly fine on any other Neos fusion, but for some reason they saved it for the one that's among the hardest to summon. So even though it's good, or at least good for being the 2007 equivalent of Omega, the fact that you have to be actively running Nex and Marine Dolphin renders it much, much less useful than it could have possibly been. Alright, so the next poor alien we have to rip apart is Neospatian Glow Moss. I know what you're thinking, that's some neat artwork. And I agree. Truly a shame it's wasted on such a piece of shit. When this card attacks or is attacked, the opponent draws one card, reveals it and apply one of the following effects based on the type of the card. If it was a monster, end the battle phase. If it was a spell, if this card was attacking, you can change it to a direct attack. And if it was a trap, change this card to defense position. Ah, yes, because this amount of RNG for effects this underwhelming is always an amazing idea, isn't it? And making the opponent plus is the cherry on top. Surely the fusion must make up for this embarrassment. Elemental Hero Glonios, and I'll just read the effects from now on because the summoning conditions and the extra deck shuffle are obvious, does the following. Once per turn during your main phase 1, you can target one face-up card your opponent controls, destroy that target, then apply the effect based on its type. Monster, this card cannot attack this turn. Spell, this card can attack directly this turn. And Trap, change this card to defense position. Well, I mean, targeting destruction once per turn was kinda neat 5 centuries ago, but the downsides of the monster and trap effects, which you will probably want to use most often, make the card even more mech than it initially was. Is the definition of below average if I ever saw one. The next card we have to talk about is Neospatian Twinkle Moss. You summon it by using Nexon Glow Moss and again it's the exact same effect except instead of the opponent drawing a card, you draw one. So for your Neos draw engine you could either make space for Glow Moss and Nex, summon Twinkle Moss and attack with it or maybe not be a silly person and just use Upstart Goblin. And if you're wondering about the presence of Elemental Hero Twinkle Neos or something like that, the truth is, it doesn't exist! Yep, after a Twinkle Moss they just flat out cut the support for other Neos patients at Nex, presumably because they figured out absolutely no one in their right mind uses it. So now you have this card with 6 monsters on it that only actually supports 2 of them. And this is why forward planning is sometimes an important aesthetic choice in business decisions. Next up is Neos Patient Flare Scarab, a level 3 with 500 attack and defense and it gains 400 attack for each spell and trap card the opponent controls. Elemental Hero Flare Neos is a fusion of Neos and Flare Scarab and it gets 400 attack for each spell and trap card on the field. Okay, I'm not making the joke again mainly because this thing can reach some decently high attack values, but still, that's the only thing it's good for, being a big stupid beater. And don't get me wrong, I like beating it myself from time to time, but this is probably not the way I'd go about it. 
You may be pretty familiar with the next monster because it's actually really good and in fact it's limited. Neo's Patient Grand Mole at the start of the damage step when it battles an opponent's monster allows you to return both monsters to the hand without damage calculation. Sure it's not used as much nowadays but before the days of Gamma Seal this card was basically the one out to absolutely everything. Reusable, non-destruction, non-targeting removal on top of an easy to summon level 3 900 body. Just let it sink in, Neo's Patients have an out to Dark Destroyer. That's how good Grand Mole is. Grand Neos is a fusion of Neos and Grand Mole, and once per turn, it allows you to target and return one monster the opponent controls to the hand. Well, I mean, it's fine? Compulsory on each of your turns was pretty decent, again, back in the Middle Ages, but right now this card is really nothing special. Now, if it didn't target, then I'd have stuff to talk about, but at this point, Grand Mole kinda remains superior for not targeting and, you know, not requiring a field spell in order to live. Our first triple Neos fusion is Magma Neos. You get it by shuffling Neos, Flare, Scarab and Grand Mole into the deck, it has 3000 attack and gains 400 attack for each card on the field, and during the end phase when it gets shuffled into the extra deck, return all cards on the field to the hand. The attack boost is actually decently strong, but let's pay attention to the shuffle effect. This is a characteristic of Neos triple fusions which allows them to do one final goodbye before leaving the field. In this case though, the effects kinda contradict each other. If you use this thing's massive attack to run something over, the mass bouncing during the end phase will most likely leave you as a completely open target for an OTK. Magma Neos is decent for running over some problematic monsters, that is if you manage to summon it before those monsters run you over, but other than that there's not much use to it. Neos Patient Air Hummingbird is a level 3 with 800 attack and allows you to, once per turn, gain 500 life points for each card in the opponent's hand. Well, if you ever wanted to start off the duel with 10,500 LP, Hummingbird's the word. Does it do anything else? Nope, sorry, it's exactly what it says on the tin. <sighs> Sometimes simple stuff like this makes me miss the old days. Then I remember the old days were pretty shit too, as evidenced by the existence of stuff like this entire archetype. Moving on. Elemental Hero Air Neos, oh and I'm sorry for your asshole buddy, it was for the greater good, is a fusion of Neos and Air Hummingbird and as long as your life points are lower than the opponent's, it gains attack equal to the difference. While Air Neos is actually a pretty fun card to build OTKs around and I would recommend doing so because shit's pretty hype, mind the fact that this effect completely contradicts Hummingbird's effect. While Hummingbird increases your life points, this thing focuses on you not having many life points, so for that matter, Hummingbird might as well be a vanilla considering the fact that if you're running it in the first place, you're probably doing it just to bring out Air Neos. I think it's safe to say that this one is probably the best out of the 6 standard Neos fusions, even though we haven't shown off the 6 yet. Elemental Hero Storm Neos is the second triple fusion requiring Neos, Aqua Dolphin and Air Hummingbird. Once per turn, you can destroy all spell and trap cards on the field. When this card is shuffled into the extra deck during the end phase, shuffle all cards on the field into the decks. Jesus Christ, talk about overkill! Once per turn, Heavy Storm. During the end phase, Rainbow Dragon. Fuck you, fuck the opponent and fuck the entire field. Okay, okay, well obviously it's not great, because the Heavy Storm effect doesn't do much against quick effects and the mass spinning during the end phase does you more harm than good, but as already stated in some previous videos, I'm a complete sucker for nuke cards and while Storm Neos is cool, there's an even cooler one coming up pretty soon. As for Storm Neos itself, I'd say it's probably the best out of the three triple fusions. Even though that's not saying much because they're nigh on impossible to summon nowadays. The last Neos patient is Dark Panther, level 3, 1000 attack and once per turn you can target a monster your opponent controls and until the end phase, this face up card's name and effects become those of that target. While it's not really anything I'd call good, in fact, it's awfully situational, it's still kinda fun to pull off its effects in said situations. For example, target the opponent's Ignister and make a spin yourself and... Uh, I would list more examples but that's pretty much the entire extent of this thing's abilities. Steal something that removes stuff from the field, remove said stuff from the field, the end. It would be kinda cool in some mirror matches if it retained the effect when it goes to the graveyard so that you could use it for floating, but it doesn't, so that's kinda all there is to it. And no, you cannot copy Cyber Dragon Infinity's effect with it and attach Xyz materials to it because that's not how that works. Dark Neos is a fusion of Neos and Dark Panther. Once per turn you can target one monster your opponent controls and while this card is face up on the field, that target's effect on the field is negated. You can only target one monster at a time with this effect. Meh, he's about as situational as Dark Panther. Maybe you'd wanna get rid of something that can be destroyed by battle or you could negate Utopia the Lightning and crash into it or something, but again, the usage of this is severely limited. 
If it was a quick effect or again if it persisted after the targeted monster got sent to the graveyard that would be pretty cool but that's not really the kind of power you should expect from a basic Neos fusion. Elemental Hero Chaos Neos is the third triple fusion which you get by fusing Neos, Dark Panther and Glow Mass. During the end phase shuffle this card into the extra deck then set all face up monsters on the field. Once per turn during your main phase 1 you can toss a coin. Oh no, no, god, no, please, anything but that, no! I don't wanna suffer again, I don't want to be in pain anymore! You can toss a coin three times. If three heads, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. If two heads, negate all their effects. And if one head, return all monsters you control to the hand. <sighs> it kinda looks like the fate of anything related to glow moss is to have the sickest artwork but the most imbecilic of effects. If you're feeling lucky, go ahead and toss three heads, but don't blame me when you wipe your own board and get OTK'd next turn. So, we're done with the Neos patients, but there's a few effect monsters as well as a few other fusions we also need to cover. First of all, the Chrysalis monsters. Pinny, Larva, Dolph- wait, wait, this is not the appropriate voice for these names. <clears throat> Pinny, Larva, Dolphin, Chicky, Mole and Pantail. You can tribute each of these while Neos paces out on the field to summon their respective Neos patient from the deck. This is one of the things I was referring to when I said Neospace makes the deck not dead on arrival, even though these things are still very, very hard to consider running. After all, you do need Neospace out on the field to do anything with them. Oh, but wait, Konami realized this and they made not one, not two, not three, but four support cards specifically for Chrysalis monsters. Contact, like that shitty Jodie Foster movie, allows you to tribute all Chrysalis monsters you control to special summon their respective Neospatient from the deck, without needing Neospace. Cocoon Party allows you to special summon one Chrysalis monster from your deck for each different Neospatient monster in your graveyard. Cocoon Rebirth is a continuous spell that allows you to tribute Chrysalis monsters to special summon their respective Neospatient from the graveyard. Cocoon Veil vale allows you to tribute a Chrysalis monster to summon its Neospatient from the hand, deck or either player's graveyard, and all effect damage you would take that turn becomes zero. And Red Cocoon is actually Red Dragon Archfiend support, so I don't know what it's doing here. And that's all fine and dandy and all that stuff, but consider the following. Don't. The fact that you need to go out of your way to put these fucking things in along with their support cards just to hurry up and get Neos patients out on the field says quite a lot about their consistency. Here's how to fix this. Cut all the support cards, make the Chrysalis a single monster whose effect says you can tribute this card while Neos space is out on the field to summon one Neos patient monster from your hand, deck or graveyard. It's not broken, it does what it's supposed to and it makes the archetype only a tad more tolerable but still not good because we are talking about Neos after all. Cross Porter, which doesn't even look like Neos patient support, is a level 2 with 400 attack and defense and has the following effect. You can send one monster you control to the graveyard to special summon one Neos patient monster from your hand. When this card is sent to the graveyard you can add one Neos patient monster from your deck to the hand. Behold, this is your searcher, apparently. The first effect is almost entirely pointless because there's really not much benefit in tributing a monster to special summon Neos patients from your hand as opposed to just normal summoning them. I see no reason why the second effect couldn't have just been search on summon, but hey, at least you can dump it with foolish burial? Maybe? Whatever works for you. Neospace Pathfinder is a level 4 with 1800 attack which can be discarded to add Neospace from your deck or graveyard to the hand. See, this is pretty nice actually, decent beater for a level 4 and unlike some other specific field searchers it can fetch from the graveyard as well as the deck. It's just too bad that the field spell it searches is not very good other than for giving training wheels to your fusion so that they don't fall over after 10 seconds. Elemental Hero Neos Alius is a Gemini monster with 1900 attack and its Gemini effect is that its name is treated as Elemental Hero Neos while on the field. Apparently this is supposed to be an easier to summon Neos retrain, which it most certainly is not, but it found place in many hero decks as a target for mass change into Koga, as well as being a decent beater in general. Kinda sad that heroes have such a lack of a proper light monster that they have to resort to a crappy Neos alternative for one. But in actual Neos decks this thing is, if ever, usually ran at 1 because you generally want the real Neos in the graveyard so that you can revive it with something, as opposed to needing this guy to take up two of your normal summons just to pretend he is the big daddy. Now here's something that probably came out of absolutely nowhere if you never watched the anime, Neos Wiseman. A level 10 spellcaster with 3000 attack and defense which can only be special summoned from the hand by tributing a face-up elemental hero Neos and Yubel you control. It cannot be destroyed by card effects. At the end of the damage step when it battled, burn the opponent equal to the attack of the monster it battled and gain life points equal to that monster's defense. While not quite a terrible effect, the summoning condition is completely asinine. You know what two things really don't go together? Ojama and Darkworld? 
Correct, but also Neos and fucking you Bell. To add insult to injury, this thing was a fusion monster in the anime, which means you didn't even have to be controlling Neos and you Bell or to have it in your hand to summon it. I have no idea what they were thinking and I don't plan on thinking about it either. If you think you should run this, you must not be very wise, man. Haha, <laughs> humor. Going back to the fusions, Neos Knight is a monster that made its debut in the Bonds Beyond Time movie, so naturally it's a bit better than most Neos fusions because it's more recent. For one, it's summoned by regular polymerization using Neos and any warrior type monster, it has 2500 base attack and gains half the attack of the warrior type monster used for the summon, it can attack twice during each battle phase, but the opponent takes no damage from this card. Basically a decent out to some large problematic monsters, even though the no damage downside is kinda annoying. Decent card to have in a Neos deck because you will be running quite a few warriors after all, so a nice breeder is always good to have on board. Also, it's summonable by Miracle Fusion, which is a miracle by itself, considering the fact we're talking about a Neos fusion monster. Alright, so the next card is genuinely really, really good, like even for 2016 standards this is actually amazing, so for this one exception in this miserable set of cards, please make some room for Rainbow Neos. It's a level 10 with 4500 attack, yes, bigger than Quasar, and you summon it by fusing Neos and Rainbow Dragon or Rainbow Dark Dragon, thankfully by polymerization and not contact fusion, because the latter would make summoning this the card game equivalent of finding Jesus. Once per turn you can activate one of these effects, send one monster you control to the graveyard, shuffle all monsters the opponent controls into the deck. Send one spell or trap card you control to the graveyard, shuffle all spell and trap cards the opponent controls into the deck, and send one card from the top of your deck to the graveyard, shuffle all cards in your opponent's graveyard into the deck. And this was made in 2007. Mass, non-destruction, non-targeting, spinning removal of any part of your opponent's field, including the graveyard, available to you simply by having Neos, Rainbow Dragon and a Poly in the hand. And maybe you think I'm overhyping this because of my mentioned bias for nuke effects, but dare I remind you, some brilliant madman over in the OCG recently topped a 52-person tournament with Rainbow Neos Turbo. Now, I'm not calling the deck meta or very consistent for that matter, I've playtested the thing and it can break quite a few times, but that doesn't detract from the quality of this card in the slightest, especially when compared to other Neos fusions. It's just such an insane leap in power between this and something like... Chaos Neos. And it possesses arguably the strongest form of removal that doesn't allow for any floating unless you're playing against Madolches, I guess. Get rid of monsters, get rid of back row, hell, even the graveyard isn't safe. The rainbow consumes all. If you didn't get it by now, I strongly recommend checking out Rainbow Neos Turbo because it's insanely fun to pull off, easily the best variation of Neos you could possibly play, and to top it all off, it's absolutely fabulous. Rainbow Neos passes the test with flying colors, even going so far as to give this deck an edge in versatility not many archetypes can even brag about having. So, something as flashy and grand as Rainbow Neos sounds like a pretty dang good way to design the ultimate final boss monster of a crappy archetype such as this one, does it not? Well, not quite. After all, Rainbow Dragon isn't even a Neos patient card. Nope, for the very final bossiest of boss monsters for Neos, we have this gigantic, shiny turd, Divine Neos. Which I somehow forgot to put on my top 10 list of hardest monsters to summon. This is a big, scary level 12 with the following summoning condition. Must be fusion summoned using any 5 Neos, Neospace, Neospatian or Hero monsters, including at least 1 Neos or Neospace monster, 1 Neospatian monster and 1 Hero monster and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Uh, truly, Divine Neos considers himself the important one in the relationship, seeing the amount of investment it requires from you. But to be honest, at least it's not contact fusion. Would that even be physically possible? Well, anyway, about the effect. Once per turn you can banish one Neos, Neospace, Neospatian or Hero monster from your graveyard, this card gains 500 attack and until the end phase it also gains the banish monster's effects. That's it, that's the whole thing. So, for all this effort, what do you get? A 2500 monster that can occasionally rise up to 3000 or 3500 and copies some of the most underwhelming effects in the game, one at a time, until the end phase. 
Imagine calling your friends over to display them your brand new collection of explosive fireworks that shoot up 500 feet into the air and make a huge colorful cock in the sky. Naturally, everyone is super excited to see it, so you take your sweet time setting it up, everyone is bored out of their skulls, there's definitely not enough alcohol for everyone to sit patiently through this, and once you're finally done and ready to launch, the fireworks start making farting noises, spinning on the ground and shooting sideways into the neighbor's dog. And that is the experience of summoning divine fucking Neos. The only decent effects I could imagine this being copied and used with our destiny hero Plasma, maybe some masked hero... Yeah, as if! The only possible deck that can efficiently summon this is one that's specifically dedicated to it, because this abomination has no place being splashed into any hero or Neos patient decks unless you're actively planning on summoning it as fast as possible. For some reason. And those would be all the monsters. Frankly, I was hoping this video would be shorter, but nope, and we still have 9 more support cards to go. Well, using the term support very loosely. Let's check out their consistency cards first. Space Gift is a normal spell card that allows you to draw one card for each different Neospatian you control. Nice in theory, but then you remember that practice involves Neospatians staying on the field for a grand total of one single turn, so building up a field for you to use this for decent draw power is a hypothetical construct at best. Also, that's some lazy artwork, they literally just put a picture of that gift over Neospace, are you serious? Convert Contact is a normal spell that can be activated only while you control no monsters. Send one Neospatian monster from your hand and one from your deck to the graveyard and then draw two cards. So yeah, this is actually pretty legit, this might be one of the least restrictive archetype limited pot of greed effects in the game. Getting rid of two Neospatians from two different places isn't that bad and kinda sets up for Miracle Fusion if you run any of the Omni heroes, which you really should, and is generally a pretty decent first turn play because you need as many resources from your deck as possible when playing Neospatians. So yeah, good card. Common Soul is a continuous spell with the following effect. Select one face-up monster on the field, special summon one Neospatian monster from your hand to the same side of the field as the selected monster. The selected monster gains attack equal to the attack of the special summon monster, and when this card leaves the field, return the special summoned monster to its owner's hand. If you didn't get it yet, you're supposed to use this on Neos to bring out whichever furry animal is hopelessly stuck in your hand at the time. This, of course, includes the fact that you need to have Neos out on the field in the first place, which is quite a pain in the ass, but it serves its purpose for what it's supposed to be. The only problem is, as already mentioned, relying on a level 7 vanilla to do anything relevant. Miracle Contact is basically Miracle Fusion for Neos. Instead of having to control both fusion materials to summon a Neos fusion, you can instead use Miracle Contact to shuffle them into the deck from the hand, field or graveyard and special summon the appropriate fusion monster from the extra deck. Always run 3 and never any less. This might be one of the most appropriate card names there is, because the fact that it allows Neos to perform anything but the world's worst contact fusion extravaganza is a miracle in itself. In most cases, you will be relying on, no, hoping for this thing to appear so that you can actually make a few plays. Just make sure Neos space is on the field or it might not pay off. The card is so good even Neos himself is proud of it, he's like, Hey, look at me, I'm in space. Instant Neos space is an equip spell which you can only equip to a Neos fusion monster. It doesn't have to go back to the extra deck during the end phase and if it leaves the field, special summon an elemental hero Neos from the hand, deck or graveyard. You know, I find it really funny how the equip spell of all things gives your fusion monsters the effects they should have had in the first place. Not dying during the end phase, and when they do die, they return their batched hard to summon material from wherever it is. But with that out of the way, no, it's not worth running because the fact that it only works on the fusions makes it bricky by nature. Speaking of giving fusions the effects they should have had, Contact Out is a quick play that allows you to return a Neos fusion you control to the extra deck, and if all of its materials are in the deck, special summon them. Look, I hate repeating myself, so I'm just gonna say that what I said about instant Neos space also applies here. This should have been either an inherent ability of the fusions, or maybe a once per turn effect of the field spell. That would actually be pretty cool and would allow your fusions to avoid nasty effects, but no, instead we get a quick play spell, and if you run it, it's probably at 1, goodbye. Reverse of Neos is another quick play which you can activate when a Neos fusion monster is destroyed. Special summon elemental hero Neos from your deck in attack position, it gains 1000 attack, but is destroyed during the end phase. Why is this archetype so... self-loading? Pessimistic? Suicidal? And I don't mean suicidal like Fire Kings where they also take out the neighboring country along with themselves, no I mean it feels almost like everything in this set of cards is specifically made to give you hope and then violently shut it down as soon as you start feeling happy about the current state of affairs. 
If you didn't get my point, I'll try to make it simple. It's a shit card for silly people, don't run it unless you're a silly people. Neos Force is an equip spell which you can equip to elemental hero Neos, it gains 800 attack and when it destroys a monster by battle it burns the opponent equal to that monster's attack. During the end phase shuffle this card into the- oh Jesus Christ, alright alright, this card is proof, they were taking the piss. They played the soul like a piano and we didn't even realize it. During the end phase shuffle the shitty equip card into the deck. More like Neos Farce, am I right? Wrath of Neos, or more appropriately Neos Karate Chop, is a normal spell which allows you to return Neos to the hand to destroy all cards on the field. Pretty badass actually, but it would be stupid to run it without the intention on focusing specifically on activating this for a little bit of fun. Besides, most decks these days don't even care about this amount of damage being done, especially if it means the opponent is getting rid of their primary playmaker for it. And that would be all, no more cards. So to sum up this catastrophe from outer space, let's give it some grades. Consistency. Bar a decent draw card, this is an archetype that focuses on summoning a level 7 vanilla monster without consistent ways to do so, as well as focusing on contact summoning fusions which all have a bad case of homesickness. Power. Other than a single monster that has an OTK built around it, the power output of Neos ranges from pathetic to OK, Magma Neos and Rainbow Neos being the sole exceptions. Comeback ability. Much like regular E-Heroes, you'll most likely be able to live another turn if you draw into a Miracle Fusion or Miracle Contact, but other than that, once you run out of resources, there are pretty much no ways to get them back. Protection, none to speak of. Versatility, see this is a tough one because in theory Neos patients have outs to a lot of things except they're not very efficient in producing said outs. But given that we already bashed on the consistency and the fact that Rainbow Neos is a thing, I'm willing to cut them some slack here. So, how do we fix Neos? Not that they're salvageable at this point or anything, but I have a couple of ideas on how this genuinely interesting concept could have turned out better. First of all, give Neos an effect, one that allows it to special summon itself from the hand or graveyard for some kind of cost, be it specific to the archetype or not. That guy really needs to go outside more often. Second, fusions should just either not disappear during the end phase, or if they do, they should re-summon Neos from the deck and maybe add a Neos patient monster from your deck to the hand. That way you don't inherently minus for doing what you're supposed to be doing with the deck. The field needs some relevant effects, attack boosting is nice, but how about some protection? Maybe give the opponent an incentive to destroy Neos space by making the card protect Neos from targeting or something like that. Also, give it some searching power, maybe let it fetch Neos from the deck so that we don't have to resort to Prisma anymore. The Neos patients need some effects that are congruent with each other instead of random stuff with hard variations on the scale of usefulness. Maybe one searches others out or revives, you know, stuff like that. But let Grand Mole keep his effect, he's great. And of course, improve the actual effects of the fusions. If you have more than 10 fusion monsters in your archetype, make them a toolbox for dealing with various kinds of problems instead of giving them boring, slow or downright gimmicky abilities like coin tossing. When I say Neos patients had potential, people usually roll their eyes because, to be fair, it does sound like a pretty asinine statement. But most people don't take into consideration that Neos probably served as prototype for the upcoming ways of synchro summoning. Fusion without needing polymerization was up until that point only seen in stuff like XYZ Dragon Cannon, and you can definitely see some influences of Neos's combining attributes in order to create new monsters in some synchro archetypes. I think the fate of Neos ended up being as tragic as it was because Contact Fusion was still in a heavily experimental phase before Gladiator Beast rolled in and started ripping the meta a new one. Since I'm more fond of Neos's gyver like aesthetics, I'd have kinda preferred if they ended up taking Gladiator Beast's place instead, but hey, that would have probably meant people whining for several years for something like Unban Hummingbird, as is tradition. Ladies, Mental Gen, Railbikes and Railcars, it's 2.30am over here, I am so exhausted from making this video, which is probably why the ending was so half fast. so if you liked it, please do click on add and subscribe. I'm Rata of Ranked and Yu-Gi-Oh! and I'll see you next time.